Good evening and welcome to the Business Day. I'm Andrew Laidley. Complaints this evening from a local developer that banks are not on board with the government's plan to create housing solutions for Jamaicans. President of Halton Development Management Limited, Paul Walker, claims that many developments have stalled because of financing delays caused by banks. A quick glance at the corporate area shows that more residential houses and apartments are being built. The same can be said about other regions across the island. In short, developers are building. But President of Halton Development, Paul Walker, argues that behind the scene, developers are having a hard time getting financing. There are some projects being financed by the Exim Bank of China. There are some... I am actually looking at overseas source of funding in addition to work with being done with my investment banking partners to finance the projects that we have in our pipeline because we find that the banking sector is not a willing partner in this mission to provide housing solutions. And it's a problem. He explained how financiers have delayed his current development. What you see in front of you literally represents 16 weeks of work. 16 weeks of work and we have spent eight weeks fighting with our bank to try and get us to the next point where we could finish the project we could have completed this development by the end of july from when we started on the 15th of january if we had the banks playing ball with us based on what we're able to do mr walker is now insisting that the housing minister intervenes so minister i'm going to use my platform to charge you with seeing if you can get those bankers in a room, lock the door, and tell them you need a solution from them. Because that's what was required to move the bottleneck that the Prime Minister and yourself has as a mandate to move housing solutions forward. The business day contacted the president of Jamaica Bankers Association, Jerome Smalling, for a comment on the matter. Mr. Smalling said his only advice to the developer is to speak with his bank to determine why they are unwilling to support his project. The Bank of Jamaica BLJ says the introduction of a central bank digital currency CBDC will significantly reduce the cost associated with procuring and dis disbursing currency through local financial institutions. Now, BLJ Deputy Director Robert Stennett said the CBDC is essentially a one-for-one -one replacement with currency. All the features of the physical paper will be reposed in the digital currency and be fully acceptable as a means of payment. BOJ Governor Richard Biles anticipates that the CBDC will bolster government service delivery and boost financial inclusion for a greater number of Jamaicans. He said the challenges will, with the deployment of funds to beneficiaries under the COVID-19 Allocation of Resources for Employees Care Program, highlighted the need for the CBDC. The Bank of Jamaica will undertake a seven-month CBDC pilot until December this year, utilizing its fintech regulatory sandbox. To currency trading now, it's ended today with the U.S. dollar selling for $149.35. The Canadian dollar held firm at $124.98. The pound is going for $212.95, while the euro sold for $183.50. The JSE index gained 32 points today, while the junior market index lost 4 points. Among the winners were SSL Venture Capital, Epley 8.75% due 2023, Sterling Investments US dollar shares, Jamaican Brawlers Group and Trans Jamaican Highway US dollar shares. On the losing side were KLE Group, Medical Disposables and Supplies, Jetcon Corporation, Palace Amusement, and Lasco Distributors. And that's the Business Day. I'm Andrew Laidley. Good evening.